Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to my second banter blitz. So let's see who we've got here. Ready to play? All right, let's start with this. What's the time control? Ah, it's five minutes. All right, I think I'll probably start playing three minutes as it's slightly more fun. It's been forever since I've seen this line. I think I played this against Paco, but it must have been like eight years ago. All right, let's just play it safe. Castle, and his king is kind of weak. Um, I don't know if I like this whole f6 thing. I mean, uh, yeah, I guess he's going to castle along, but it's not like his king finds full safety there either. Okay. Queen d3 is probably going to play e5. I'm not sure if I like that too much. Is there anything wrong with queen d2? And then knight c3. I don't see it. It looks a bit bit funny to put the queen on the diagonal of the bishop, but I don't see how, how he can exploit it. So I guess he'll cast a long knight c3, and and my idea is to get the knight to a4 or, or harass his knight with b5. Okay, so if knight, I thought I could play knight c3 here, e d4, knight d5. That looks decent. And he also has knight takes d4, but at least I have knight d5 there. And ed4, knight d5, bishop e3, knight e3, yeah, d3, I'm, I don't think he can go for that. Uh, his king is a bit too exposed to start taking the turn. Okay, knight e7. Yeah, this looks like a decent move. I think I'll just get my king out of the way. I mean, because, you know, e3 was, uh, I wasn't able to take, and e3 was kind of hanging. So now this puts the onus on him. I could have maybe considered stopping him from castling along with rook c1, but don't really want to put another... Okay, this is a pleasant surprise. Um... Questions where I put my mind? Okay, this looks fine. I guess he'll castle now because bishop g5 allows bishop h5. And I have queen a2. I'll just play g3 and try to get my knight back. Still kind of a complicated position. Normal. All right, there's probably nothing wrong with knight g2. He might play bishop h3 and then I can play rook f2. Maybe I should have started with rook f. Okay, this is fine. Rook f2 and then knight f4 next. My king is still. That's interesting. I mean, this does give me a lot more freedom now. Now I can double. It will be forced probably to play f5 at some point. Yeah, he wants to get knight f5, but we're not going to let him do that. So I might... Well, OK, the question is now, yeah, I expect him to play f5. And I think I'll put my bishop on b3. Looks quite harmonious. I don't know, he can think about playing like knight c8. No, probably doesn't work. My bishop b3 looks good. So now I'm putting pressure on d5. And I might think about knight e2 to f4, but he's still very solid. I'm not actually breaking through any time soon. And I would think he should play like rook c7. And double on the C file. He doesn't have entry squares, but it's still sort of annoying for me to deal with that. And 
I don't know what else he's going to do besides play rook c7 here. Actually, he has f4. Probably should have been more careful about that. G takes. I'll have to play. Okay, so. Okay, let's just get the king out of the way. Rook g8 made a lot of sense. I don't know if he wants to follow it up with f4. I should take with the g-pawn then. I don't see how he actually attacks me after that. All right. I don't see why not. So my only issue is that I want to play knight of four, but then he'll take, I'll take with the rook, and then he has the c3 square open. My knight is sort of a, a loyal defender of the square. I don't want to give him entry there, but, but I also don't know what else I'm going to do if I want to make progress. Now he might think about, yeah, queen c6, maybe. But this is why I thought he should put his rooks on the c file, because then he could have if he had his rooks on c7, c8, he could try to get rook c3 in, which is very annoying. Now he'll have to waste some time. All right, I really feel like playing b5 now, so getting some space and opening up queen b4. Um, a4, I mean, if queen b4, where's queen f6? I don't know what this does. So you can't play knight g6 here. Now he wants to play knight g6. But I can even take on d5 then. So now if I take the c file, knight g6, take on d5, take with the pawn, then he gets here and he gets some counterplay. Right, why don't we just, I don't want to retreat. Yeah, let's, let's play rook c1. If knight g6, I can even play rook f2. I can play bishop takes d5 there, but I'm not sure I want to. I'd rather just go rook f2. Keep my pawn structure intact. All right, let's take this. And if rook c6, he has knight e7. And queen a2 is also tempting. What about like queen c3? And try to invade him by queen. Now queen c6, he'll maybe try queen g5. But I can always protect that pawn. With rook e1, yeah. Here I wanted, this is what I wanted. I wanted to go queen e6. And now the queen is really, really strong on e5. That only helps me, I think. Give a check. Rook c7 looks good. So you want to do rook g7, I guess. I can play bishop takes d5. Rook e7 is sort of in the air, but doesn't seem to be very effective there. But I'll probably just play like rook a2, rook a7. And uh, I feel like things are falling apart for him. OK, let's try rook a2. Okay, this allows. Wait, I just <laughs> I had queen g stone made. <laughs> okay, um, that works too. I couldn't see made in one, but it's it's good enough. All right, who else have we got here? Better call Magnus. All right, that's also five minutes. Um, five minutes fine. Better call Magnus is from Turkey. Play something solid. Trying to get some sort of 
time it's variation. I don't know exactly what this um, this line with a6 and g6 is called. I think with just g6 and not a6, it's called dismissal variation. But um, okay, so is there a reason I can't go here? I guess this makes sense in conjunction with d takes e5. I mean, usually bishop g5 doesn't <clears throat> doesn't really do a whole lot. Or sometimes it makes sense to provoke the knight to e7 because it very often would rather go to f6. But this, what he's doing now, I don't, it just looks like he lost time. h6 is useful for me. Um, I guess it depends where he puts his bishop. Like bishop h4 does, no, okay, it looks, looks a bit artificial. Uh, he'll probably play bishop e3. And I think I can go f5. The only thing downside of f5 would be e f g f knight h4. But I can castle there. I don't see why that's an issue. So it looks like I, I sort of got a, a dream, dream version of it all. Yeah, I would, I would suspect he's going to go knight h4. I'll castle, and if and he can play f4. His knight takes d5 doesn't work. It's check on d5. Um, I think I should castle. If queen h5 doesn't worry me, I can f4. This looks good. Looks like the right way to play. I don't really want him to take, so I'll probably play e4 myself. Actually, it's kind of annoying that my bishop on d7 is taking a square of my, where my knight would like to go. And I would ideally love to be on f6. And g3 looks logical. Um, so this is a bit of a question. I can I actually like the idea of putting the bishop on e8, on f7, and putting pressure on d5. My d7, f6 is coming as well. Yeah. Um, okay, let's play ninety seven. He'll take and he'll give a check on d four, I think, and then I can go knight f six. He's kind of he's not fully developed the way that he wants to. I think I can play knight f six. There's no. I mean g four f g bishop e four. I don't think that worries me. I'm not sure I want that either. Yeah, I, I don't think that worries me. After bishop before I have c5 and and I can take back. Okay, c4. It's kind of asking for c5 now. I don't know what he wants. Does he want to play queen c3? And then after b5, he'll have to he'll have to make some strange moves. Uh, but it actually, I mean, I'd rather break up his center. I don't see how I'm going to do that. C6 doesn't appeal to me, so let's go for C5. I think he'll play Queen C3. Because if he takes, I, I can I take with the palm. It's, it's decent. If he could get his B1 knight to E3, then my position would be kind of kind of terrible, but uh, that takes a very long time. Does this concern me if I play d5? I also have rook b8. I don't think he wants to take yet. And because I, taking on b2 will, will be really huge in that game. This looks fine. Yeah, I mean, he could just play b3, of course. Um, but I, I guess this is a good inclusion with B8 and B3 for me. And then I'll probably play D5.
I guess he, um, yeah, I was wondering about this. Can't I take? What's the, what's the problem with taking? Knight e4, rook c2, knight d6. I mean, it doesn't, doesn't seem like it's likely to work. I also have like c5, it's sort of an attractive move. Rook b2, I just don't see it. Maybe bishop b4, fe4, knight e4 is what he's hoping for. I, I have queen b6 there. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing his attack. Maybe he just wants to play like bishop b3. That actually might be his idea. I can play c5. Actually, I'm not liking that too much. Maybe I should just play d5 here. d5 gets queen e5. But okay, I, I prefer that to rook b2, bishop b3 just suddenly didn't seem very appealing. I mean, queen e5, I, I still. Okay, this actually makes me a little bit happier that he chose to take. It just seems like it frees my, my bishop a bit more, frees my pieces. Yeah, now. Um, okay, let's play bishop f7. And then he'll play queen e5. Queen five. I mean, I'm ready to lose the f5 pawn now. Just to. Yeah, I didn't want to allow him to take in knight f5 and win a pawn in the endgame. So he'll take on f5, he wins a pawn, but I still have this like, really big center. And his queen is also. I don't think it's trapped, but it's forced to go to some strange squares. Yeah, bishop b6, queen e5, bishop g4 actually wins an exchange, but I don't know if I want that. I'd rather. Go here, force him to h3, and then d4. This starts to look really nice. Yeah, I can also give him a check first, but and then e3. d4 looks pretty good. Doesn't threaten anything, but if, if I get my pawn to d3, it's just it's just a disaster for him. I mean, that will that'll basically be the end of the game. So I, yeah, f5 sort of what I was thinking. Bishop h5 looks good. G4, bishop g4. If rook d2, I mean, I can play e3, which looks winning. So I don't know, maybe he'll play g4 take and queen g3, but that, that doesn't seem to help him very much. Um, knight d5, I can just take on d1. Yeah, I think this is the end of the game. I don't know where it went wrong for him exactly. Queen e5, rook e8, it seemed like he was doing everything right, and then probably taking on, on f5 was just too greedy. Okay, so take on d1, take on six, d3, queen g4, king h8 doesn't worry me. My pawns are, are really strong. I can play e3. Take e2. Let's go for one. Two. Yeah, e1. Rook e8. All right, that was a fun game. I feel like I was probably getting outplayed for most of it, but then uh, let's see. Mr. Surehand. Let's see, this, this is three minutes, so I'm, I'm kind of wanting to play something a bit faster. Well, considering how slow I'm playing, I'm not sure that's a good idea. Let's play the tango. Mm. Is that it's a move? Can I give a check? I don't know what d5 is actually. The bishop d2, ed5, take, take a3. Maybe after bishop d2, I should just take on d2. 
Okay, that, that makes me happy. Now I can play 97. Uh, he, he has to take on e6 now, otherwise he's, he's just dropping his d-pawn. And I'll take with the f-pawn. Uh, I actually, I don't know if I want to... I don't think I want to throw in bishop c3. Although he probably will play something like queen c, you know, queen b3 maybe. Um, Alright, a5. If a3, then I'll drop my bishop back. Keep my bishop. It's kind of a strange structure. But he, he is very undeveloped. He hasn't developed his, his king side at all. And his one of his issues is that he wants to play g3, bishop g2. Yeah, now his bishop on c1 is a bit... Um, it would rather be outside the pawn chain. I really want to develop a b6, but then he's going to harass my bishop. But I, I actually like knight a4, bishop d6. The bishop looks kind of nice there. Although now knight a4, bishop d6, maybe c5 I have to worry about. Bishop d5 at least. It almost looks like some sort of Budapest gambit. Um, okay, knight g6 looks fine. I mean, I, I want to at some point get knight g4, knight h4. All my pieces are pointing at his king side, so it seems logical. Okay, let's let's just try it. Now I, I'm already ready for sex, maybe. Yeah, so knight e5 he'll probably take and f4. I don't really think I'm ready to sack right now. I think he should take and play f4. I mean, if he doesn't, like, let's say he takes and plays bishop b2, he has to concern himself with queen g5. Knight e4, queen g6, and bishop takes e4 is coming. And this was the other logical move. Um, I don't really want to take, I preserve my bishop, I lose time. So, so let's go for it. The only thing is that I, I'm sort of attacking. My pieces are active, but there aren't enough of them really to attack. But still, bishop b2, I have queen g5, which is very strong. Forces him to play something like f3. Something he doesn't want. Or, or just wins on the spot. Okay, he has e4. But e4, I can... I mean, knight f3 looks good with knight g6. So what does he do here? Probably f3 now. Looks looks sensible. F he would like to get f3, e4, but the bishop on e3. Um, I thought queen g3 would be a move. Let's see. I can either play very ambitiously, or I can play... Because queen g3, I'll play rook f2, knight g6, and bishop f3. Take, take. And I don't know if I like that. So maybe I'll just play knight g6, and I expect him to play bishop f3. Take, okay, let's play e5. f5, knight e7. I like that my pawns are on the dark squares to restrict his bishop. And kind of important. Okay, yeah. This will be. Looks logical. Um, yeah, let's try queen e7. I don't know why. Maybe I want to play e4. I'm not sure yet. Depends on his next move. Yeah, okay, let's play e4. And put them on h4. Knight goes to f5. Now I win the exchange. This looks very good. Okay, I'll lift the rook. Uh, he'll play f5, or he allows me. Ah, I'm actually dropping this pawn. He'll start some something against. Uh... Okay, this is great. Now, now I should be completely winning. Took a three. 
My only concern is being flagged, but I'm up like 10 seconds, so I shouldn't get flagged. All right, chest to win, FM. Ah, this is a five minute game again, not really what I was hoping for. I want to see some time scrambles. Yeah, A3 is a bit of a, bit of a passive move. I mean, it's, it's probably a fine move. It's just, I guess, not the most critical. OK, I'm worried about queen g4. I have a feeling I'm not playing this right. But yeah, he can go for queen g4. It would have forced me maybe to play something that I didn't exactly want to do, like g6. It's actually kind of an unusual Sicilian. Um, I mean, the con variation in general, you rarely see the bishop being developed outside of the pawn chain to c5. It's, it's really only in this and the time on occasionally that you see it. Um, yeah, I mean, he'll play f4 now, I'll play castle. We'll get some position, which is pretty typical for, for the con. I didn't expect that. It doesn't change a whole lot. I mean, it changes the character position a bit, but the valuation is still that it's roughly roughly balanced. Although I, I think he should play f4 at some point. I mean, yeah, I'm just a bit surprised that he's so reluctant to to go for f4. Like uh, you can play like this, but basically black. Black is just a little bit, a little bit to be preferred. Yeah, if he takes, I'll, I'll take, I'll take with the bishop, and he has some issues with, um, with the c pawn. So this is sort of a dream of Sicilian. I think he'll play knight d4 now, and then c3, and he's still quite slow. <laughs> I'm just not predicting a single one of his moves. D5, okay, this looks pretty decent. D4 now, yeah. But if I take, if he takes with the rook, I have bishop c4. He has rook c3, so he doesn't lose the exchange right away, but it's a very strange square for the rook. So more likely he'll take with the c pawn. And the question is, do I want to allow that? I feel like I, I do, but I don't see what I do after that. So I think I'll just develop normally rook d8. I guess he'll play like rook fe1 or something similar. Again, not predicting his moves. So knight c4 now. I b2 is hanging down. If he goes to c1, I guess I just take him queen b6 and win a piece. So I, I think uh, bishop b4 was, was a losing mistake. Yeah, I'm not seeing his move now. Maybe. Queen c3. It looks very awkward, but it might be might be necessary. But how do I actually win here? I can take on e4, and if queen b6, he has king h1, so I don't quite see the win. I have queen e5, which looks pretty good as well. Yeah, okay, I have to take. I don't have to, but there's probably nothing better. I feel like queen e5 is the right move. I suspect he'll answer this with rook f1. So I, I don't think that. He actually has queen f3 here. I can't take on d4. 
because there's mate on a pip. But if I play any defensive type of move, like f6. Yeah, okay, so the, I mean, he, he's defending very well all of a sudden. Okay, I'll play. I don't really want to play f6. I mean, he has this knight c6 trick with that queen, queen c5. He has c3, and then I take on b2. I'd really rather find another move. But okay, I doubt I'll find it. I suspect he'll play c3, knight b2. And he's still in the game. I mean, he's not a pawn, but it's not the end of the world. This is a good move. Knight b2, knight c6, knight d1. Seems to work. Knight b2, rook d2, knight c4, knight c6, rook d2. Seems to work. I hope I'm not blundering something. Yeah, knight c4, okay, he'll, he'll probably go back like rook d3. Knight c6, I have rook d2, that, that's, that's quite nice. Hmm. Yeah, queen e4, rook e1 is it's really not that easy to to refute. I don't know if I should play something I, I don't really want to play, like rook d6, but it is at least very solid. I'm not going to be blundering anything after this one. Okay, now queen e4 comes to mind. I think now it's more a question of if I want to play super safe, trade queens. And I kind of do. I don't. I don't want to keep the queens on and and a time scramble, blunder, blunder something. Yeah. So I can take first. The one. Now it, it should be completely winning. So, take knight g5. Um, actually, why don't I put the knight on f5? I have, yeah, I'm, I'm probably just showing very bad technique here. I mean, okay, why not, why not knight c4? Take knight d4, king f7, I'll just play it very simply. I just say he is defending this extremely resilient. Get the knight out of the way. Not sure where he's going with his knight. If c3 he would like to play, but drops a3. Rook h3, I have h5, so it's all under control there. Um, knight c6 kind of. It's active, but it's also not threatening anything in particular. And it kind of, yeah, I, I think I can just play a5 just to really strand his knight. So now rook d6, he has knight a7. And he wants to play a4. Just not, uh, not showing good technique here. All right, I'll play a4. I give him the b4 square, but uh, yeah. The guy is such a good defender, I have to say. This I, I'm not happy with. We're both getting a long time, so I'm kind of happy to see that I suddenly get a lot of checks. And King G3, Rook C2, Knight B5, Rook B2 wins a piece. Uh, yeah, so he's going for activity. He still can't take on B5, so Rook B2. So I'll just clean up all his pawns. Check. Five to be safe. 
All right, I'm just going to take this. He gets a lot of checks, which I don't like. That was much closer than I expected. Yeah, I'm just going to pre -move. Only one... Point seven seconds left. <sighs> so this is why I shouldn't be playing three minute. Uh, but I will anyway. I mean, I, I figure I'm going to get flagged very soon, probably in this game. Yeah, I've had a lot of recent experience in this line. Mainly from the white side, or pretty much only from the white side, but yeah, a lot of recent games. It's one of those openings that is very difficult to understand. Although, at least from my understanding, this, this should be quite good. If I can get this structure in. Okay, it makes sense. He, he's going to go for um, a D4. And I just kind of want to keep it closed. I don't want to start opening up the center. And this really looks attractive. I mean, take, yeah, okay, I, I have a, a spoiled pawn structure, but he's not exactly attacking the pawns. Now I, I can keep my bishop where I want it to be, which is attacking his knight. And if like c4 or something, I, I can always defend with f6, so that, that doesn't concern me. So I'll do this. So C4, I have knight E2 and knight D4. I mean, the question is, do I start to get ambitious and go for G5? Which contains some positional risk. And then maybe castle long. Castling long is, is not really out of the question. This really allows a lot of stuff. This should be two, this should be three. I don't know. And it's tempting to. Okay, let's castle. It looks fun. Fun to castle long. It might be completely unnecessary. And <laughs> probably not very good. But... F3, guys. This is the right move, I think. But tactically, it looks extremely risky. 92, king of two. I, I just don't see how I do it, though. Kind of annoying. Yeah, f3 was a good move. Maybe I shouldn't have allowed this. All right, let's play g5, knight c4, bishop g6. I, don't know. I obviously misplayed this position. He's going to play like knight g4, f6, knight g3, which, which is good, but at least I have my plan now involving pushing stuff. Does the pushing stuff even. Let's go here. He doesn't have any entry squares. So I think I'm ready for the next move. Or I can take another move to prepare it with bishop f7. But in any case, my, my plan is very clear. Just g4. Okay, let's let's go for it. If he takes twice, I'll take on e4. Yeah, I, I didn't like his last move, queen d2. 
I feel like he was maybe rook d2 and rook d1 was more to the point. It's knight d6. Does he really want this take? Let's take here. Uh, I don't think he wants this. I think the attack is, is tremendous. Bishop before. Why not Bishop before? I think King H2 is his idea. So now, knight d5. I actually have knight d3, rook d3, bishop d3, queen d3, e4, and take on g3, and probably win. That's good enough. Okay, gets a check. I can, I can, let's put it there. Uh, now the time scramble starting. It's not, not good. Okay, h4 looks good. I guess g4. Um, where do I go now? Let's just attack his queen. Take with a fate. Um, F4, uh, F2, look, F3 was winning now. F4 and look, H3 wins a queen. And that was a pre move. That was, I think that was overall pretty good. Okay, I'm going to look for three minute games. Three minutes and his name involves Chuck Norris. I don't think, uh, I don't think I can say no to that. Six. I know nothing about Scandinavian, so <laughs> this is probably not going to end well. I just remember, like, back in the day, I used to play this. I, I mean, I played it like two or three times, and I put like bishop on g7, and it worked out okay. And I would play a6 b5, or a6. I guess usually, why well, responds with a4, a6. If a4, then I can think about knight c6 because then the b4 square is safe for my knight. He can't kick it with a3. He allows me to go for b5. Thing is, I, I don't want to allow him to play knight e5. So I'm thinking knight d7. And then he'll probably play queen d2, bishop b7, bishop f4, queen b6. It, it does feel like a pretty standard position, neither of us really having an, an advantage. But uh, for the Scandinavian, I think this is, this is sort of a win. I don't really know what I'm supposed to do in positions like this. If, uh, it's difficult for either of us to come up with anything really constructive. Well, let's do this, and if bishop h4, I'll play knight h5, he'll play knight e4. Now his, but his bishop is very strange now, so knight e4 I can play queen to like b6, and it doesn't feel like... Um, I really didn't think this would be possible. And what does he want after knight f4? And queen anywhere I can take on g2. He has knight e4, it doesn't seem to work. Or he has bishop g3 with chaos, but I assume the chaos will, will work. <clears throat> will work to, to my advantage. 
I mean, he has Knight of Seven, King of Seven, but I also don't see his next move. Really. <clears throat> Yeah, this is what I was when I meant chaos. But after 91, his discovered attacks with knight of seven, I mean, knight of, knight of three, it is a full rook. And I, I don't, I doubt he has it anywhere near enough compensation for it. And if he plays rookie one, I just take 25. Play queen c6 and and pretty much just called it in one position. Yeah, so I start with knight f3. If he takes, takes. I'll be able to rook him out. If he doesn't take, I take his knight. No, I'll take his knight. I uh, move my queen. Questions where? Maybe to e7. I also have knight h2 take, queen takes. Queen g6, like queen h1 seems winning. That actually appeals to me more than anything else because it does seem incredibly simple. Yeah, this is like resignation, I guess. Take his queen. It's a full rook. I'll just play d5. I doubt I can do anything to spoil this one. Let's, see, let's play someone slightly lower rated. Still strong player. Who shall it be? All right, let's take Escuela Agrupacion. I oh, know it's five minutes. Five minutes feels like too much. This guy actually has a photo of me. Sami Chela, I guess. Sami Chela. So, um, yeah, let's play knight six. If he wants to go for knight g five, so he's playing standard joker piano. I was hoping for knight g five and d five and some. Some sharp stuff, but we're going to play a quiet game. A three is an unusual way of approaching the position. It's it does make sense. It's similar to a four, just a little bit less active. But the point is to preserve the bishop from knight a five. All right, take d five. I think we have basically an equal position. I'm actually a bit surprised he didn't take get rid of my knight because now the knight on f4 is is tricky. Like knight takes e5, allows queen g5. Um, so, so he's really playing with fire now because queen g5 he's has no choice but to go knight g4, and then I have h5, and he has to go knight d3. And, but I, I don't think I have anything better than that. I mean, I've, yeah. so knight g4 is forced, otherwise he loses a piece. h5, knight e3, these are all, I think, completely forced moves. And then bishop takes h3 maybe is very strong. Um, alternatively, also rook e8. This red right rook takes a three could be good. Even like ninety five, it really looks maybe it looks good. Okay, so it looks like he um, that queen g five came as a surprise for him. Okay, <laughs> I don't know if that was a blunder or resignation, but anyway, good game.
let's see. Go to the more. Here we go. All right, let's see, three minutes. I'm gonna pronounce this Tori Iger, I guess. When someone plays an opening like this, you know that they uh, that they study their chess. They know what they're doing, especially if they play knight c6. <laughs> then you know they really know what they're doing. But like this is a, a really um, really big battlefield for a lot of top level games in general. This this whole line, not this specific position, is that. At least this one doesn't look familiar at all to me. But it looks like I got a good version out of it. I suspect that he's going to adopt some sort of setup involving knight a5 and b6. Because b6 right away allows bishop b5. All sorts of... Um... Okay, that, that is actually a good move. Now what do I do? I think first I'll just play rookie one and just semi useful move. Yeah, now my thought was that e6 would be dangerous. I don't know if or why. And bishop b6, knight e5, queen. Okay, I, I think I just go for it and then I think about the consequences after. Always works. Yeah, so now I do have a choice. I think we might as well start with knight e5. If queen e6, I, I do have tactical ideas involving bishop f4, maybe rook b5. Maybe queen a4. Queen a4, actually. What does he do? Because b6 allows bishop a6, queen a5 winning. Okay, he has knight b7, but then I guess knight c6 wins. Any other move here? Like knight c6. Okay, now this is uh I'm not sure he had anything better than this in knight b7, but, but this is really bad for him. Yeah, this is a piece. Unless I'm blending something. I don't see it. Could have also gone for an endgame, but I think it's actually funny because he doesn't fully threaten to take my queen. But I don't see what else I would do besides play queen a4. G5. All right, so now. I think knight c6 does a queen and four bishop b7, king b7, queen a7, and rook b6 mate. Oh, or gf, same, same thing. I think take, yeah, king c6, rook b6 is mate, and king c8, I have knight e7 winning the queen, if nothing better. I can even like pre move. Yeah, I think so was a queen. I want to make it a bit faster. I feel like this. He has to play queen c7 to avoid an immediate mate. And then I have rook b8, rook b7, or b95 also. Rook b8. 95 has to go to e8. Because king d6, queen a6 is made in two. Yeah. 
Well, he is doing very well to uh, avoid me to say. I feel like I, I almost I must have missed something faster. I'll just take his pieces. I, I actually forgot that I only have like 20 seconds. I'm not, I wasn't really looking at the time. Okay. So now, now he's still made it. <laughs> actually still made it. Let me just pre-move something. <laughs> I made that as hard as I possibly could have. Okay, let's uh, see who we got. <laughs> Playing another English. Maybe he's uh maybe he's not there. All right, let's find another game. Yeah, this guy also has a photo of me. Oh, but I can't accept that. Oh no, oh he's okay, he's here. Took a while, but I have to sort of adjust to playing without a, an increment because I, I don't actually realize the urgency of it until I, I have like a few seconds and I'm about to lose the game. Because pretty much every event now has some sort of increment, even if it's just one second. I'm not sure D4 was right. If he takes on D4, okay, this this looks fine. Take knight f4, and if he moves back, I I do have D5 as an option at least. It's it's either D5 or F3. Hmm. I didn't expect that move. I think I should take this. Yeah, bishop g5. So he really wanted me to take the bishop, which I understand. He didn't want to allow d5. The thing for him now is that he would love to get his bishop back to d6 so that he can move his knight off of this awkward square and play c6. Uh, but his bishop is misplaced. It takes. I mean, I would think about bishop b7 if I were him. <laughs> okay. I guess he uh, thought the same thing. So now. <clears throat> yeah, I guess queen two or something. But okay, I, I think I should play f3. I should at least give him this, this decision. Either he allows me to give him permanent weakness on e4, which I don't think he can do, or he takes and then he has to deal with the awkward problem of where to put his queen. Yeah, this this I actually think is, is going to be very bad for him. Do I play like queen c4 now? End games? I mean, I, I assume he has to go for an end game and play like rook e8 or something. I think I'm, you know, I'm not sure that was the right move. But I have to be careful. So there's undoubtedly a correct way of gathering up this pawn. And I will almost certainly pick the incorrect way. 
it's not that easy because he he might you know play ninety seven the night before he has all these ideas. So my last move was only to stop night before. Like rook f four, I, I just didn't like night before there. Now I, yeah. So if I take, I don't know where he puts his knight. I think I can take. Yeah, but this this side I don't mind. I, mean, I may have lost my bishop pair, but it's still on. Okay, let's put this rook. My e four is ready. Um, do I want e four? I think I might want to in the near future, not right now. I felt like for him, it would have been better to play b6 at some point. But still really tough to actually prove any advantage here. I don't mind playing e5, that's why I, I just want to stop him from playing b6. Yeah, this I actually am happy that he gave it to me with tempo. So I put my king on e4. I, yeah, trading works. I don't think is good for him. Okay, so he's just waiting. Um, probably a good strategy because I'm going to take too long. Yeah, this I don't mind. Let's just advance some points. Okay, bishop d2 comes to mind. Yeah, bishop d2 definitely comes to mind. I think maybe h6, g7 would have been more sturdy of a defense. Now rook f1, bishop h6, is it? it's all coming together. Finally, yeah, this threatens mate, he'll be forced to play bishop e 7 and then rook f7 invades. Rook g7, rook f7. <laughs> Why did I allow that? Oh my god. That was so bad. Okay. I don't know. I, I mean, yeah, he, he pre-moved that, which was kind of unfortunate because he, he really did find a, a good chance to stay in the game. Missing uh, missing bishop c5 was a bit, a bit sad. Okay, let's, let's see who we got. Matek twenty. Here we go. So this is, is not a bad variation by any means. It looks it looks very strange. Um, but it's not bad. That being said, I, I have no idea what to do now. I just don't I think that knight c3 is a move. I know this is enormous theory. I feel like like this is the way it's supposed to go. Yeah, I have a feeling that I'm following some theory that I'm clueless about. But now it actually starts to look familiar. Queen e5, queen d4. Maybe I stumbled upon something which is um, which is actually uh, good. Well, decent. I don't know if it's good, but. Uh, yeah, I don't mind this take, bishop f4. If the knight g6. So he, he really knows his, his stuff too. I mean, he, he's playing all these moves quickly. I assume that this is theory, that he didn't uh, play this by accident. But I, I don't mind. I have the bishop pair. Um, activity, his, his dark scores are weak. So I would guess that the end game is a little bit, a little bit better for him. I mean, 94, the reason I, I didn't protect it is because 94 allowed rook e1. Okay, now we should be three. I guess he'll play rook e8. And 
What did I do in response? I'm not entirely sure. I think I'll play bishop c2. Yeah, bishop c2 because knight e4, bishop e4, rook e4 allows rook d8, knight of eight, bishop d6. Training the knight, but more importantly, it also has mate because my own knight on a4 is also hanging. Yeah, I was thinking rook d4, but then b6, c5 is very awkward, so a little bit. A little bit less uh, active than I wanted. Okay, but now I'm happy. Knight c5. I think he should have played b6 when he um, hmm. almost feels like he was ready for the move. Oh, wait, uh, I just won the exchange. I was uh, completely blind for a second. <laughs> Bishop c7. Okay, so it's for some reason this was just hidden. I, I just didn't see this, this bishop c7 that traps the rook. Uh, okay, now d3, looks fine. c5, it's, it's still not like he's... Uh, He's dead lost or anything. The game is still going on. I mean, he, he should be objectively losing, but that's not the end of the world. So you can do that. I think I'm actually happy to just take on g6. I'll, I'll just trade as many pieces as I can. Um, as, as a rule, I probably want to trade pieces when I'm a material ahead like this. I think I'll start with this. It takes the pawn. Mm, I'll play e6. The reason I kind of wanted to play e6 before taking was if he plays f6 now, I thought I would have some bishop a4 stuff. But I'm not actually sure I want to go. I think it, it's probably just more technical to take. Play e7 with a rook on e6. And a rook on e1. And at some point, I'll move my rook like now. And to c7. Okay, he actually puts a bishop on e4. Um, yeah, let's make like one small prophylactic move. And then I have c4 ready. And then I take, and now ah, he takes there. Okay, this allows d6. He has to take and bishop b7. Okay, so he resigned. Okay. This player is 3,000. Okay. How are you mean? 2856. Is he here or is he also? Now let's give him a few more seconds. There he is. At some point, I was playing the Queen's Gimp accepted um, quite a lot. And I got so much criticism for the opening. And I thought it was kind of funny. But it's, it's not. It's not the worst opening in the world. Okay, G6 is kind of unusual. I'm once against um, against Sam Shanklin played G6 when he put the bishop on B3. And there it made absolutely no sense. Uh, it was just an awful move and it was like losing right out of the opening. Here it makes a lot more sense. Can I play g5? I mean, knight of g5, knight e4 works. But if he just plays, if he just takes and plays bishop. Uh, no, I'll just play knight e7. Actually, I still have a feeling my position is bad. Yeah. 
if I could. Hmm. Okay, now, now does G5 have a problem? Okay, let's go for G5. It looks like a slightly better version now. I actually feel like I'm winning something. Like take on e4 and f5 and f4. That knight d7 I can even take with the queen. Man. Don't I just win material here? The real question is what tactics he'll have after, after f4. I assume he'll have something. Like if he plays bishop c2, f4. He has moves like queen d3, but the knight of six. He can also include knight d7, queen d7, then queen d3, but f6, queen d3, knight of six. F4. I think it works out. And I'll take with the queen rather than the bishop. I also have rook f5 in some cases, which. Yeah, I'd rather not. I think rook f7 is solid. I don't know why, but there was a lot of rook, a lot of squares the rook could go to. And this one, for some reason, feels the most stable. But it's actually going to be still very difficult to play this position because after I take on g3, he's going to take with f1. And no matter how good the position is, it's going to become very chaotic and difficult to play with only one minute. Okay, so e5 I think is good, just to keep the position close. I think he'll play d6 here. That one I'm actually happy to see. I was worried about d6. And now where do I go? Can I go to c5? So I'm, I'm really waiting, keeping his bishop on g3. It's not going away anytime soon. And I don't see why I should help him develop his attack by taking and allowing him to play fg3. Now I actually kind of like that if he plays b4, let's say I can go to b7, and my knight on d6 is a very solid blockader. So I, I yeah, this might, might even help me. I mean, he has queen c6 to stop that, but I don't think queen c6 is serious. I guess I'm, I'm really happy to get this in. Um, okay, queen b3 maybe he'll play. Queen d3 allows both e4 or bishop f5. I think bishop f5 is fine. Followed by e4, I can even play both, both moves. So why would I do that when I can take on c2? Play like rook c8, let's say. Keep giving him decisions on where to put his queen. And how e4? Okay. Um, looks fine. I should probably just play faster because I assume this will get into a time screen. Okay, now queen of six. I I'm going to take not one, but, but two of his pieces. And you see the knight on d6 is. Usefully defending. He has rook e4 here. Okay, I'll just take all his pieces now. Yeah, queen f2, I assume, is winning. Rook f2, pawn takes, king f1, rook c1. And then f1, queen. And this is a. Where's the main? rook f2. I mean, it was probably like made in one there, but I didn't see it. I'm just so. We're Queen D1 and Queen D4. <laughs> I'm still really not good under time pressure, so. Like, once we get down to the last few seconds, uh, I freeze up. So, chess blitz 35. Let's try Benoni. Not uh, with this move order, you wouldn't allow the four pawns attack, which is why. Um, okay, he doesn't go for it, which is kind of a relief. It's considered very dangerous, and I think with good reason. To play like f4 cast, uh, f4 bishop g7, bishop b5. 
I guess that's the way you do it. But this guy, he also knows his stuff, right? Because this provoking h6 to play queen d2 is definitely not something you play unless you know what you're doing. And he definitely knows what he's doing. I'll play king h7. I don't want to. Sometimes you can sack this pawn and go for like queen b6 stuff, but I don't really want to think about all that. Yeah, this guy really, to play knight h3 after knight d7, he's, he's definitely a Panoni expert. <laughs> okay, f4, I have knight g4. This is the only way I can develop my pieces. Okay, g5. I mean, he's going to play f4, and it's not a, a very good position for me. But um, I think I was just unlucky that I came across a guy who actually knows the Bodoni extremely well. And he's playing b4 now. I'm, I understand the desire to go for b4. I'm not sure if it's correct in this position. I think f4 was, was more to the point. I'm also not sure if my last move was good because I had the option of knight h5, which, which was probably a better move. If b4, I guess I'll take, 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 and then let h5. Yeah, yeah, I shouldn't have allowed this, but at least now I get b5 in. I mean, at least this is this is a plus. Yeah, you can do that. So this is a typical idea to play b4 and rook b4. The question is. Don't I have some tactical ideas here? It feels like I should. I hope I rook b1. I shouldn't have taken one before, actually. Um, yeah, I'm not happy with what I just did. If rook c8, can he take stuff? I don't think so. I'm not really going to calculate it. But if take, I have like rook c3 in. If he takes on e5, it's not a good structure to, to move my d pawn to e5. But it does give me the bishop pair and some you know, bishop of eight ideas. I think that compensates the. I think that getting rid of his bishop, his dark square bishop, is. is... Wait, knight b5. Yeah, actually, he can do that because there's no pin to. I have to take. I have to take and I have to move quickly. Make a move like queen a3. Looks like a move like any other. So. I mean, my opponent is, is really playing quite well here. I think he can he can play like bishop f1. Okay, he chooses to take, which and then plays with that. Makes me kind of happy because, yeah, I can play queen g3 or queen e3. Let's try queen e3. Maybe queen g3 is better. Okay, now queen g3. Now, the rook on e1 is a bit hanging in the air, sort of. Now, if I get rook g8, bishop of I'm really attacking him. Knight h5, knight f4 as well. I think that his choice to take on e5 is maybe wrong. Knight h5, if queen f7, I, <clears throat> I have rook f8, which wins. So I think this looks like a queen f7, rook f8 actually wins the game. Because a queen of two, I pick up two of his pieces. Bishop d7 is probably a very strong move. You know, I think nothing better than rook g8. <clears throat> I thought king h8, okay. I mean, knight f4 is a huge threat. If, if I get that in, then it's it's pretty much game over. Like rookie, no, rookie two or knight f4. Bishop g4, knight f4, bishop f3. <clears throat> it allows like knight h3, but I'm not sure if I want to do that. So he's going to h3, but this is just a full rook. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's just, just a full rook up. Let's take this, take this. Um, 
No, no. <ride> e quindi fa. That was a tough game. Listen, I see a chess club. OIT chess club. Sorry. I don't know where this chess club is located, but. So, like, if it's a, if it's the official account of a chess club, that means I could be playing anyone from the club, right? Which I assume means that I'm playing their strongest member. Um, yeah, it's always annoying to play a King's Gambit player because they usually know what they're doing, and I don't. So it usually ends up with this. <laughs> He's blitzing his moves and getting a better position, and I assume I'm getting outplayed. So he's going for like it should be two and castle long. I just I don't know this theory. I don't know what this is. Okay, let's play e5. And, uh, so I go g8. I assume that I, I ended up in a position I, which is better for white. Queen e6. He's gonna play like knight e4 at some point, which is. Okay, that's actually relief. I, I was very worried he would play knight e4, and I just end up with a very bad backwards e pawn. Well, this all of a sudden looks okay. I'm probably still worse. Um, but not much worse, I would say. Yeah, I think his last move, I mean, he was doing everything right, and he just should have played knight e4. Take rook takes. Now he's uh, he's going sideways. He's allowing me stuff like e4, and I think I should take it while I have a chance. Get rid of my backwards e pawn. And play bishop e5 and trade off his bishop. And it, it looks like um, I'm suddenly in the game again. I think he should play queen h3 here. It should be fine, knight c3. That's still, still a very unclear position. Okay, it still looks like the right move. Yeah, this is correct. Queen c5, I think I can play because knight e4 loses a piece. I'm wondering if I can play a4, knight a4, rook a4, you know, things like that. These tactics are, are in the air. But I think my immediate threat is e3. He can't take c3 is hanging. Um, queen f5 actually. I, I just realized queen f5 is, is no move. It's threat. Okay, I'm happy about this. I'll take I'll take with the king. I guess I'll give a check. I think he'll trade queen, so. It looks good. I don't think I mind though if I play like rook d8. He, maybe knight c5, or maybe he takes. Takes knight c3. And my pawns, which were weak, suddenly look quite strong, especially in the game. Yeah, I'm happy about this. Get g5 in. I wanted to make that move anyway. h4 doesn't change a whole lot. I actually think it might help me because I. Have the g4 square for my knight. This definitely helps me. I mean, yeah, he can play d3 and undermine my pawns, but I, I always have g4. Okay, so this is a good move. I think I should play g4. Knight c4, I, I don't know where I'm moving my rook. I think to h5 is fine. Yeah, okay, let's play king g7. Give him a difficult choice. It's a decision that he has to make with his rook. Does he want to take a knight e3? Might be correct. 
Oh, really? This one? No, I don't think this can work out. E3, E2. Was, he didn't have enough time to start grabbing onto the point set. Okay, good, good game. Met two thousand. Did I accept? There we go. So it's again a Benoni, but not quite a bit of them. Like, I remember Topolov was once playing 97 in these positions, and he, I think he lost a, a game to Luke Von Riley. And I, 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 it's probably not a good score for the Knight. I don't see why the Knight would be good on 87. The only real reason is to support F5. Um, okay, so Queen G3, okay, F5 looks fine. Bishop C2 seems logical. F5 seems like if I'm not playing this move, then what was the point of putting my knight on a bat square? But it actually looks like a decent outcome of the opening. Not like black is better or anything, but certainly not worse for black. Rook F8. And black might even be better. Like that's the thing about the Benoni is that if white starts trading a lot of pieces, then black does have this majority on the queen side. Okay, this is tactically very dangerous. I mean, knight d3 and knight b2 wins upon knight c4 is also tempting. But knight d3. Oh, does he have a bishop c5 here? I assume it doesn't. Knight e4. I see four looks fine. Hmm. This is where I can just take on d5. Or I can. Yeah, I don't think I should get ambitious and try some, some weird stuff. I should just. I don't know. Now, now we're d5 bishop, uh, queen b3. Let's just put the bishop on d4. It can't, can't be a bad place for the bishop. Why am I thinking about this? I mean, let's just take the pawn. Queen b3, I, I do have queen f7, so it's, it's a bit awkward looking, but. Okay, now just rook e5, looks fine. f4, I'll go back. If I manage to keep the two pawns, where do I put this rook? e7, looks safe. f5, I'll just play rook f5. Rook f5, queen f5. I have this queen f1 um, counter threat. Why am I thinking so much? <laughs> I should just be making making moves since I'm up two pawns for pretty much nothing. It's also one of those positions where it could get weird. It could things could get out of control because my king is weak. And I'm pretty sure what I'm doing is, is a perfect way to uh, to lose the game. I mean, yeah, this this was definitely not the way to do it. Was he one? That would be six. I don't see it. Is he one G four? Just somehow, I somehow don't believe G four, but I would also not be happy to see it on the board. Ninety-five, I expect. I suspect will be played. I 
I mean, my opponent is both strong and fast, which is um, kind of concerning. And he, he's definitely playing tricky. But on the other hand, I am I am up two pawns, and and my pawns are starting to run. So take. I think that rook c8 now wins Not very very convincingly. Rook c8, and then c2, pretty much, no matter what. Now I just have to knock it flat. Queen b7, c2. I'm not seeing it. c1, queen. Queen d5. Okay. Do I wait? It's check. It's mate in like two, three minutes. Okay, yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's say this is the last game. Um, let's make it fun. MDM. So this will be be our last game. Undoubtedly a bad move, um, but let's. Let's try something different. I mean, it's just it's just a king's king's gambit um, attempt now, which um, which might not be as bad as it looks. Yeah, G four is my concern. So, like traditionally, I would think Bishop C five, G five, Castle, G F six, Queen F six is the way to do this. Let's go for it. Like with the knight on b1, it would be a standard theoretical sacrifice. I feel like he doesn't. I mean, he he probably knows that g5 is a critical move, but he didn't really want to go for it. Hmm. It just looks completely atrocious for black. I mean, what am I even doing? I, can't, I mean, I guess I'll cast it. Even here, G5, I just don't really see my next move at all. I was thinking, okay, no. No, I don't mind this. G, D5, G5, I'll have something. Whatever that something is, I don't know. I mean, I can... H3, I don't know, this looks fine. Looks like a pretty good setup for white. Um, pretty not good for me. Yeah, I actually think I should take with the palm. It's, it looks a bit odd. Um, but I think you also have to be ready to to play very speculatively if you're going going for this kind of, these kinds of openings. I mean, yeah, knight d4, you can take another pawn. But I have rook e8. At least, like, because the this diagonal is open uh, with the bishop on d6, his king is not entirely secure on you know, c5, I'd say. Not entirely secure on, on king's side. Like, for some reason, it doesn't, it doesn't feel dead lost or anything. Yeah, this I'm actually quite happy with. I think... I can play queen c7, rook e8. 
Vamos a ver si sale. Actually, just looks like a dead loss position anyway. Oh. King H8, okay. Yeah, D4. And he's playing well. That's that's another issue. I think I have to play G6 just to at least break up his structure a bit. We'll see if he plays F5. Hmm. Can I do this? I guess so. I mean, I'm attacking f4. <laughs> I don't know if I really want to take it, but yeah, I'm mainly hoping that he'll he'll do something like this. He'll take back either with the rook or the pawn. Um, I'll take back, play knight f6, and rook g8, and I have a blockade. I have good places for my pieces, which is already, I think, quite a start when it considering the position I have. Like bishop six, queen of six, I mean, it's not a good position, but it doesn't even feel like uh, I'm objectively losing. It feels like I should be able to have enough for a draw. And practically speaking, who knows? And maybe, maybe it's even in a blitz game difficult for white to handle. That's a good move. Let's just play some, I don't know what to do, so I'll just play some nondescript move. Let's play with g5. Yeah, I can't really do anything. Besides just wait around. <clears throat> Bishop g3. Bishop h4. Ah, what's got me there? That was a very sneaky move. Okay. <laughs> not not the greatest game to go out on, but uh, flagging and, and a drawn ending. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the games.